Hey folks, Dan Freer here with your market update for tax day. If you haven't done your taxes, you better get those in today because they're due April 15th, 2024. So what are we seeing with rates? Here's where rates ended last week. They're not going to be there long. They're going to go up from here. Why? Because people just keep spending and spending and spending. Why is that good? Why is that bad? That's what we're going to talk about in today's episode. So without further ado, let's get over to it. What you're seeing on the screen right here, these are the top six products people use when they're buying their first house. This might be your rate. It might not be your rate. What consists of this rate? Well, Mortgage News Daily, they survey lenders all over the country and they ask them these five questions. If you had somebody buying their first house, it's going to be a primary home and a single family home that, well, there's more to it. These people are putting down 25% and they have a 780 credit score. So if that's not you and you want to figure out, okay, Dan, can I buy a house in this market and what would my rate be? I'll give you all my information at the end of this video because I'm a mortgage loan officer, actually a mortgage broker. I'd love to help you. I'm licensed in all 50 states as well as Puerto Rico. So without further ado, let's get over to it. Today's report is retail sales. So if you were out this weekend shopping like crazy, congratulations to you guys because you helped increase retail sales. Uh, month over month, a little bit higher than expected. And that's actually really bad news when it comes to interest rates. Let's get over to it. What's going on? Well, the 10-year treasury is spiking right now. Why? Hot retail sales. And also we have conflicts all over the world right now. Russia, Ukraine, uh, the Gaza Strip. You know, now we have Iran blasting Israel. So it's a mess out there, folks. Normally when these are happening, people flood out of the stock market. They get out of stocks and they run into the bond market. They drive, they, they go in and they start buying up the bond market, pushing up prices and the yields down. That's not happening right now. There is a completely a disconnect in the markets. That's what normally happens in the last hundred years or so of our economy. When you're buying stocks, you don't want uncertainty in the world because that's uncertain. So you move your money into a safe haven, which are bonds. Okay. But the, the, the problem right now is people just continue to buy and buy and buy. So here's retail sales. It's not me just sitting here yelling at you guys. Look at where retail sales are. You have core retail sales month over month. Last reading, it was 0.9, okay, or 0.6, right up through here. It was expected to drop just a little bit to 0.5. It wasn't expected to double from 0.6 to almost well, 1.1, almost 1.2 doubling. Then you have retail sales right here. Previously reading was 0.9. It went, it, it cooled off just a little bit, but when you look at the core retail sales, it, it, it's dismal. Okay, so the next thing we want to see is what's what's causing all this. Well, people aren't running out of money. Remember all the, the everybody was telling you that you know, the the economy is really suffering and things are going to be bad. You're going to lose your job. You're going to lose your house and everything else. Well, it doesn't really look like that's happening right now. Let's go over to the disposable income. How much extra money you and guy have after after each month? If we go back to here and we look at basically since it, the the creation of this chart since 1930, look at what's happened. Well, you have people coming here to the country looking for a better life. So they work hard and they save money. So what do we have? We have people saving money throughout, throughout the uh, country's history. And then you get to here. Here's where we start kind of getting a little bit of a, of a disconnect. Let's go back 10 years from now. What's happened? You see this chart going through, through here and then all of a sudden, wham, you know, you have this big spike. What happened from 2019 to 2021? Well, COVID, the pandemic, which actually had a lot of people not having to pay for some things. If you realize or remember back in those days, if you had a mortgage, you didn't have to make a mortgage payment during COVID. If you had a student loan, you didn't have to make a student loan during COVID. So what happened? Well, people were getting, they either continue to work on their job or if they didn't work, they got a lot of stimulus money from the government, but they didn't have the two biggest expenses that most households have. So what happens? You have a huge spike in the money supply. How much people are depositing at the bank? So you show that here. And then what happened is everybody was forced back to work. Remember you had to go back to work or maybe back to that office and people started spending and spending, continuing to spend money and we dropped. So again, this is the disposable income. Now what's happening, people are starting to settle in. Actually, the stock market is rallying. You have cryptocurrencies rallying. People are having more and more money. What are they doing with it? Well, they're actually spending it. And the proof of that is right through here. You have a retail sales kind of blowing out the numbers. Okay, even though you have world conflicts, you have retail sales going up. So this is basically a double whammy when it comes to the Fed. They're like, we have rates at basically decade highs, but we still have the consumer who is more than healthy because they have money, they have jobs, 
and they're spending. So that's the problem that we have right now. And then if you have more incentives like student loan forgiveness and all these other programs, you're even going to have more and more money in the money supply driving up prices, making it really difficult for the Federal Reserve to do what they're going to do. How does the stock market like this? Well, the news, basically you would think, okay, the retail sales are upticking. That means the Federal Reserve is not going to cut rates earlier than later. So wouldn't that be bad news basically for the markets? No, the Dow Jones is up 200. You have the NASDAQ up almost 100. S&P up 28 points. But the one kind of bright spot right now is oil. You're seeing oil retrieving a little bit. But these numbers, if you really look at the oil numbers over the last uh, year or just so far year to date, let's look at that number. If we just go year to date. What is it up? Well, oil prices went from $70 a barrel to where we are right now, $85 a barrel. That's a huge increase in those prices. So based on all this data, should the Fed or is the Fed going to reduce rates? Well, if you look at the CME watch tool, this is a thing that I introduced about two years ago, and then now a lot of people are following this. The Federal Reserve is going to meet in 16 days. What's the likelihood that they're now going to cut rates, or maybe when are they going to cut rates? Well, to look at that, you go down through here. What this tells us is this is the probability of when, when they might start to cut rates. So right now, the federal funds rate, the, the, the rate the Federal Reserve controls is at 5.25 to 5.5. So let me get my head out of the way. So right now we're in this range, 5.25 to 5.5. Well, it was expected in June that they were going to start cutting. I thought they would too, but I didn't think the consumer would just continue to spend and spend and spend. I had an inkling that the oil was going to go up, but I didn't think it was going to hit 90 or or $100 a barrel. So these are two things that we really got to take into consideration. So now what we're seeing is basically there's going to be no Fed um, reduction in rates probably now until July or September. So that's what I'm also thinking right now because the data isn't in the cards right now for the Federal Reserve to come in because why? People just keep spending and spending and spending. So if you went out there this weekend and you had a great time buying all this stuff, you're one of the ones that's causing interest rates to go up. So that's basically what's going on right now. So how's the bond market reacting to all this? It doesn't like it. MBSs are almost down 50 points. That is a huge move. This could equate to almost about a 0.2 0.2 addition to mortgage rates. Where are they right now? Well, mortgage rates right now on the 30-year fix is 7.3. This might be 7.5 by the end of the day. Is eights, is the eight tune, eight rates on the horizon? <clears throat> Unfortunately, it might be in on, on the short term, but we need people to just stop spending. Or, you know, everybody was talking about a recession, job losses. Where are they? Because it's starting to come out of the equation at this point. So we're going to kind of monitor the economy from here, and I'll give you the feedback on a daily basis. What that data is, the Federal Reserve's watching, and how that's affecting rates, and especially the markets. So if you're out there and you're like, hey, Dan, what actually do you do? Well, I'm a mortgage advisor. I always say that, but I'm actually a loan officer. I'm actually a mortgage broker. I work at Allied First Bank. We're actually a federal bank. That licensed me all over the country. But the good news is we're also one of the country's largest brokers. We're set up with a couple dozen uh, uh, lenders right now. We're actually kind of reducing that call. We have right now, as of last week, we had about 73 lenders that we worked with. We don't use all 73, so we're starting to purge that down to maybe the top 20 maybe the top 20 in the whole country so we can help you guys navigate this environment. So if you're out there looking for a mortgage, we'd love to help you. We'd love to be your one-stop shop. It's one application, one credit pool, and we're going to shop your loan over to, at this point, at least over 20 or 25 lenders at this time. How do you do it? Well, there's a couple different ways. One, you can hit the Apply Now button right up through there. It's going to ask you a few questions. You're going to fill out a, an application. You have the option to fill out an application or fill out the application and set up a consultation with us to ask any questions. So you can do that. Or if you'd rather call in or you did fill out that application and you want to check for an update or maybe call us a little bit earlier than your appointment, we'll go down to the bottom of the website. It's therateupdate.com, and this gives you all the information. If you want to call us, just give us a call, 844-775-5626, or you can email me directly at dan at therateupdate.com. So thanks so much for watching, guys. God bless. Hope to see you here tomorrow. But if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that right down below in that corner over there. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope to see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.